Hi, I'm Robin Krasny here with Yoga Lifestyles and we're here to rock the chakras. Anything and everything you ever wanted to know about chakras, but were afraid to ask, you'll find out right here today. My background is very extensive and my education is very expansive. Some of my certifications include Yoga Nidra, Amrit Yoga, levels one, two, and three, I've also done chakra balancing, meditative and stress reduction work, Reiki, three-in-one, crystal healing, aromatherapy. I've got certifications in specialized kinesiology, angelic healing, Native American healing. I've done acupressure, Tai Chi. I'm a certified Qigong instructor. Some of my favorite classes were my chakra balancing classes, where we learn about the energy centers in the body, which are the vortices that we call chakras. They've been mapped out for 5,000 years, maybe even longer. And we're going to just give you some basics so that you can understand the energetic systems of your body. Starting with the basic seven chakras that we have in our bodies. And there's also other chakras that different systems recognize. So I hope that I can add a little bit of information to your understanding of the chakras today. There are seven major chakras of the body. Now, the chakras are part of our body systems, even though you may not be able to see them or know that they're there, just like our blood pumping through our bodies. They're active all the time energetically in moving the energy in and around our bodies through our plexuses, our nerve plexuses, and our endocrine systems. We're gonna start with the root chakra, also known as the Muladhara chakra. It means the root of all things, the root foundation. And it's basically at the, the bottom of the tailbone, and it is our connection to the earth. It keeps us grounded. It's our connection to our tribe. It is very important in our feeling safe in the world. If your root chakra happens to be out of balance or not functioning properly, where the energy is blocked or not moving freely, you may find yourself dis feeling disconnected, feeling disconnected from the earth, feeling flighty. Some of the easiest things to do to help your root chakra is just to do grounding exercises. Now when people say, what's a grounding exercise? Imagine that this root that you have, like a tree, is growing deep into the earth, reaching down into the earth, feeling your strength into the earth. There are a few poses that you can do, some asanas to help you. The lotus, when you're sitting in lotus pose, you use that root and the lotus to ground you. You can do the child's pose. The child's pose also has a feeling of emotional security to it. And sometimes when our, when our root chakra is out of balance, we don't feel emotionally secure. So this helps the triangle pose, the garland pose, anything that helps you feel rooted, even deep breaths that you just sense that red root growing deep into the earth where you connect with the center of the earth. This will all help the energy to flow properly in your first chakra. So the root chakra, being red, also has some oils that can help to balance it. Besides your breathing, meditation, yoga poses, we have a line of oils called Vita essential oils. And these are beautiful, beautifully balanced oils that mm, contain frankincense, patchouli, cedar wood, and a number of other oils that help to balance the root chakra. So if you'd like to wear some of these, if you know you've got one particular chakra that's out of balance, you can wear these oils and it will help you because those vibrations of these oils help to balance out that chakra. With each chakra, you have many tools that you can use at your disposal to help you get the chakras into balance. If you're into crystals, into these beautiful little babies, this is a beautiful garnet and it's a red stone. Any red stones like rubies, garnets, they're great for helping you balance your root chakra. Foods can help us balance the chakras. It can help us stay in alignment and balance the chakras. So what foods would you eat to help balance the root chakra? Anything that's red, raspberries, anything that really helps to bring the red into your body also helps with that frequency, that vibration of red in the root chakra. There's a seed mantra for the sound of the root chakra. It's LAM. And it's gonna be low and deep in your voice so that you can actually feel the chakra vibrate with that sound. So if you take a deep breath, 
focus on that area in your body and say lum. You may actually feel the whole lower part of your body vibrate. This brings energy, blood flow, all that to the root chakra to help balance and keep it in alignment. So now we're moving up to the second chakra, which is the sacral chakra, also called the Svarasthana chakra, and we can call it the sex chakra. That's what a lot of people call it. It's responsible for the water movement in your body, the energy coming inward to your body. So the second chakra is really about the reproductive energy, anything to do with the fluids in your body, both psychologically, spiritually, and physically. So how do you know if your second chakra is out of balance? Well, there are certain things that you can look for. Maybe there's an impotence issue. Maybe there's menstrual cramps or problems going on with the second chakra area. Anything having to do with fertility, lower back pain, stiff back, this, anything to do with this area. If it's feeling numb to you, if it's feeling overcharged, maybe you're overly sexually active, that could be an imbalance of your second chakra as well as being frigid and cold. Some of the things that you can do to help realign your second chakra. Well, first of all, the easiest thing to do is just hip circles. Figure eights with your hips, pelvic tilt, pelvic rocking, anything that brings the energy and circulation to the second chakra. We also can do the warrior two pose or the goddess pose and the pigeon pose. Anything that really moves energy through the hip and sacral area, very good to do to open up the second chakra. We also have a wonderful oil from the Vita product line to help balance the second chakra. Yes, it's got sandalwood, orange, lang lang, all kinds of yummy oils in it. it smells so good. I think I'll wear some right now because I'm in the orange second chakra mode. This is our social chakra. So smelling good always helps when you want to be social. When you're going to balance your chakras with some crystals, Citrine is a great choice for your second chakra. Notice the lovely golden orange color. Also some amber. These, these stones are very powerful for helping to balance your second chakra. You can wear them, you can meditate with them, you'll be helping to balance your chakras just by holding these beautiful stones. As you may have gathered by now, the second chakra, the sacral chakra, is a brilliant orange when it's in balance. And so even eating orange fruits, oranges, tangerines, anything orange, sweet potatoes, those are kinds of foods that can help balance the second chakra. There are seed sounds for each chakra. As we said before, the root chakra was lam. The second chakra is vam. So as you take a deep breath in, close your eyes, focus your energy right below your navel and say the seed sound of vam. Let's do that together. Vam. You feel that vibration in your second chakra? Sound is one of the best things I've found to help balance the chakras. And you have it right here, no problem. Vam for the second chakra. So we're moving up to the third chakra, the solar plexus chakra, in Sanskrit known as the Manipura chakra, which means city of gems. When it's in balance, it's a sparkling, radiant, golden sunshine that beams from your solar plexus. It has to do with digestion. It has to do with your personal power, your laughter, your anger. It's in the seat of the liver, according to Chinese medicine. It's responsible for your personality, your will, your ego identity of who am I? This is all going on in the energetics of your third chakra. So how do you know if your third chakra is out of balance? Well, a lot of people have complained about ulcers, diabetes, hypoglycemia, anything to do with the upper digestive area. Also, you'll notice when little kids, they don't want to go to school or something's really bothering them, it will automatically affect their gut. It will affect your emotional brain, which is in your solar plexus. A lot of stored emotions are here. Sadness, pain, real dramatic things can be lodged in the solar plexus. Now, how would you do an asana or two to help get that solar plexus energy moving and in balance? Well, there's some great poses that you can do for the solar plexus. One of my favorites is the bow pose. But if your knees are bothering you, you can do the boat pose. You can do the seated spinal twist because it's twisting across your abdomen 
and in the solar plexus area. What you want to do is see if you can squish out any of those stuck emotions. Maybe take your breath deep into your solar plexus. That helps. You can feel when stuff is stuck in your third chakra because you feel kind of gnarly, maybe a little nauseous. It can help move the energy just by doing some of these poses. Now, getting to balancing the third chakra. You can check out one of these wonderful oils by Vita. This is the third chakra, the solar plexus chakra oil. It contains cedarwood, lavender, rosemary, clary sage, anything that helps to bring that smell, that energy of these particular plants, flowers, barks, leaves into your body can help balance the third chakra. Crystals can help balance your energy. They can help balance the chakra system, especially crystals of the same color as the chakra system. We've got citrine point right here. Anything that's yellow, sulfur. Have you ever seen the crystal sulfur? It's bright yellow. Those things can help balance the third chakra. You can meditate with these. You can lay it on your body while you're laying down. You can point it to your body and rotate the chakra in a clockwise direction. You can breathe as you're doing this and imagine the yellow color coming into your solar plexus. Imagine the sun emanating from your solar plexus. Imagine breathing that sunshine into your solar plexus and then exhaling it back out like you're radiating, just like the sun. So what are some of the foods we can use to balance the third chakra? Let's think of some yellow squash, why don't we? Some yellow carrots, anything starchy, easily digestible. A lot of starches are really good for the third chakra. And we're talking about the solar plexus and our personal power. So if you feel drained of your personal power, use those yellow foods to help bring that sunshine back into your life. Let's take a deep breath in. Feel the energy of gold and yellow coming into our solar plexus and say that seed sound, Ram, with me. Ready? Take a deep breath in. Ram. You can even Ram, get really big with it. Or just a gentle Ram. If you're feeling over powerful and you just want to pull it in a little bit, Ram. You can do this really to yourself. You don't have to make these sounds out loud. You can even think the seed sounds and it helps to balance the chakra. Now we're moving up into the heart chakra. The heart is the fourth chakra. It's also called the Anahata chakra in Sanskrit. It's located in front of the spine, right in the area of the heart. It's responsible for love, compassion, trust, when we've had our hearts broken, we can really feel what the heart is responsible for. It's responsible for being open to receive and to give love. Most healers, believe it or not, have a hard time receiving love. They have a very easy time giving love. If this is you, maybe you need to balance your heart chakra with allowing love to flow through you, to you, and away from you, so there's this beautiful circuit created. How do you know if your heart chakra is out of balance? Well, if you've suffered a significant loss that's broken your heart, literally they've done studies where they've seen that these little fibers, these little strings within your heart actually break. So heartbreak is a very real thing. And when your heart becomes shut down or hardened, it's difficult to open up and trust love again. So what are some of the poses, the asanas that you might do in your yoga practice to open up your heart? Well, first of all, any heart opening poses, reaching your chest open. Those are great heart opening poses like the bow pose or the camel pose or the chest openers. Anything where you expand and open the rib cage, if it's blocked, you'll feel how difficult it is at first to get your breath to flow into your heart area. But once you practice this for a while, you're going to feel a renewed zest for love and life. So if you'd like to open up your heart chakra, get it balanced with some aromatherapy oils, check out this Vita oil for the heart chakra. It smells super good. We can use bergamot, jasmine, geranium, cypress, and rose oil to open up and rebalance the heart chakra.
If you'd like to balance your heart chakra with some crystals, I recommend aventurine or green jade, an emerald, perhaps some malachite. Malachite is a beautiful dense stone, gorgeous color of green. It reminds you of being in the forest where you can take a deep breath and feel very connected through your heart to all of life. What are some of the foods that you can eat to balance your heart chakra? Well, let's think green. Kale, broccoli, zucchini, green grapes, green apple, avocado, anything with chlorophyll that connects you to the plant kingdom. This is the resonance of the earth plane that's connected to the heart. So when you're eating vegetables, green stuff, think how good it is for your blood, for your heart. It's all to help balance that beautiful open green heart chakra. So what is the sound, the bija sound mantra that you can use to balance the heart? Well, it's yum. Think of yum. What it feels like when you're feeling passionate love in your heart, you wanna give, you wanna receive, it's yummy. So let's take a deep breath in and yum. Does that feel good? You can say that over three or four times with three deep breaths and you'll feel that vibration in your heart. It really gets the heart chakra moving. Now we're moving up to the throat chakra, or in Sanskrit, the Vishuddha chakra. It's also the expression chakra, the communication chakra. This chakra is located at the base of the throat, and it's responsible for communication, for you expressing the highest truth of who you are. Some of the imbalances you might experience in your throat chakra area, laryngitis, inability to express who you are, throat problems, lower sinus problems, upper respiratory problems, anything having to do with the throat area, communication, shutting down. We wanna get that fifth chakra energy moving so that we can express and communicate who we are to the world. So some of the asanas or yoga poses you can do to help realign, balance your throat chakra, the shoulder stand. The shoulder stand, as you know, is very powerful activator for the thyroid gland, this area right here. The plow, same thing. The fish pose, where you open up the throat after the shoulder stand and the plow. One of the poses I really appreciate, kids love to do this pose, it's called the lion pose. Because when you move this energy, we talked about this from the solar plexus area, the energy moves from the solar plexus and make that roaring lion sound, it opens up the throat area. It helps to relieve tension, blockages, gets the energy moving, and helps you to express who you are. If you want to balance your throat chakra through aromatherapy, if you're speaking publicly, if you're singing, if you have something heavy to convey but you want to do it from the highest place of truth, try some aromatherapy oils. Basil, cypress, peppermint, spearmint, Mm, this Vita Balancing Oil for the Throat Chakra smells wonderful. You can even put it on your throat before you speak. It's a great way to get the throat chakra in alignment. We also have this lovely blue. I don't know if you can see this in the Labradorite. There's a gorgeous blue in here. You see that? These colors help resonate to the throat chakra and they definitely help you to see clearly so that you can speak clearly. You might be wondering, what kind of foods can I eat for the fifth chakra that will help open up and create that clear communication? Well, there's not really a whole lot of naturally occurring blue foods, but there is one that we can talk about. It's blue-green algae. It's got so many antioxidants in it. It really helps to nourish the thyroid because of all the minerals in it. Kelp is really good for the thyroid. So there's many things that you can do that aren't necessarily blue foods, but things that help nourish your thyroid like kelp, blue-green algae, and limes would be great for your fifth chakra. The seed sound for the fifth chakra is hum. When you say hum, you feel the energy coming up from your heart and out into your throat. So why don't you say that with me right now? Take a deep breath, focus on the beautiful clear blue sky in your throat. Inhale and hum, hum. Feels good, doesn't it? That can help your fifth chakra stay nice and balanced.
Now we are up to the sixth chakra, the Anya chakra. It is also known as the third eye chakra. You can imagine this big eye on your forehead. It's slightly inside and that's where you have your inward focus when you're meditating that helps to unify and bring your thoughts together. It's really important for intuition and self-awareness. It's really important, like I said, for visualization, for creative dreaming. It's a great place to create your dreams and put them out on a screen in your mind. How do you know if you're experiencing any blockages in your third eye chakra? Well, you could experience blindness, nightmares, headaches, any kind of eye strain or blurred vision. What's interesting is that these are not just physical things that we're talking about. How about inner vision? for creating your dreams. When your third eye chakra is blocked, it's hard to visualize. It's hard to create on the inner mind's eye the screen of what you dream for, what you long for. So it's really important to keep your third eye nice and clear so that you can integrate all those things, your dreams, your feelings, your hopes, your love, into a singular point and that would be your third eye chakra. Let's keep it clean. So we have some asanas for you that could help you with your third eye balancing. Even imagining breathing light into your third eye can help bring you solutions that you were heretofore unable to envision. You've also got the shoulder stand, which again brings blood flow to the neck and head. Anything that brings energy to the head is really great for the third eye. And then you have the child's pose, where your forehead is down, the blood, the attention, the energy is resting on the earth, your third eye is resting on the earth. Also, yoga mudra, where you bring your arms behind you and put your head down on the floor in child's pose. If you're looking for great aromatherapy oils to help open up your third eye so that you can have that clear vision, try frankincense, sandalwood, patchouli or rosemary, or you could try this Vita Essentials blend for the third eye, lapis lazuli is a wonderful stone, as is sodalite, and anything with an indigo blue tone to it, you can put it on your third eye. Celestite is really lovely because that helps bring in higher energies and angelic ones to help you balance your third eye. All right, you may be getting hungry saying, how can I feed my third eye? It needs some food. Well, you can try blueberries, yes. You can do eggplant. Uh, purple grapes would be great. Uh, let's see, purple potatoes. Have you ever tried those? Purple sweet potatoes and purple potatoes? Those are awesome for feeding your third eye. So let's take it together with me, everybody, and create the sound of um as you're focused on your third eye. Now, in order to do this so that you can focus on it visually is you turn your eyes slightly inward and upward into your head and you're focusing your energy, your awareness and your attention on the pineal gland. Okay, so let's take a deep breath in. Um, good. Do that a few times and then do some writing. See what you come up with. At last, we've reached the crown chakra. In Sanskrit, the Sahasrara chakra. It's where we receive our divine knowledge, our inspiration, our knowing, without having to ask anything, but just knowing. This is the chakra where our spiritual understanding, our union with our self and our divine nature all happens here. In a trickle-down theory, we experience the energy coming through the crown into all the other chakras as well. Some of the things you might experience if you're having a block in the crown chakra are learning disabilities, depression, apathy, boredom, not feeling connected to your purpose, your wisdom. These kinds of things can make you feel disconnected from the source of your existence. One of the best ways to realign your crown chakra or to get the energy moving in your crown are headstands. So if you are wanting to do a headstand but you're having neck issues or something that doesn't let you physically come up into a headstand, 
lay off the side of the bed, put your head back, let the blood come up into your head. Tapping your skull at the top of your skull can help you to stimulate the circulation, to open up the vertex that's at the top of the skull, to allow that energy to flow in. For all you aromatherapy fans out there and want to open up your crown chakra with some delicious smelling scents, try lavender, jasmine or cedarwood. Mm, this Vita oil for the crown chakra is delicious. You can put it in a spritzer bottle with a little distilled water and shake it up and spritz it all around your field, your energy field, and it will help to open up the crown chakra to receive the beautiful light of clarity and knowing who you are. And if you're looking for stones to help balance your crown chakra, look for amethyst, look for lavender stones like charite, sujalite, or clear quartz, Herkimer diamond. Herkimer diamonds are beautiful. They are great double terminated crystals that can act as a doorway for your crown chakra. Also diamonds themselves, beautiful in clarity, great for the crown chakra. So you're asking me, Robin, what foods do I eat for my crown chakra? Well, in ancient times, we fasted to create an openness, a cleansing of the body, so that the mind is open to receiving more information, more light. Think of breath and prana coming in, and you're feeding off of the universal source of energy, the life force of prana. What is the bija mantra for the crown chakra? Well, we would like to say that it is OM, or silence. Because in this space up here, just like there's no food, there's just light. You can imagine the silence and the stillness of your crown chakra, or you can resonate your crown chakra to the sound of OM. So let's take a deep breath and OM together, shall we? Imagine your crown chakra a gorgeous lavender purple. Deep breath in. Om. Do that a few times and feel connected to your source and your knowledge of intuition. I know some of this information may be a lot for you to take all in. Just know that the chakras have certain statements that go with them so that you can understand their functions in our psycho-spiritual sense of the word. The root chakra, I have. The second sacral chakra, I feel. The third chakra, I can. The fourth chakra, I love. The fifth chakra, I speak. The sixth chakra, I see. And the seventh chakra, I know. Okay? So this is an easy way that you can remember the functions of the psycho-spiritual parts of the chakra system.